thank you everyone for joining us today to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the song Mill Valley by Rita Abrams and a former third grade class at Strawberry Point Elementary School. We have Scott who's here with us from that class. Um, today we have our two elementary music teachers as well as some students who just completed third grade in our district and just learned about Mill Valley history. We also have um, Ms. Abrams' former student, who I just mentioned, who sang that original song. On July 4th, 1970, a music video was released, produced by Warner Brothers and directed by our well-known filmmaker, Francis Ford Coppola. The song, Mill Valley, is so special, not only in our community, but also around the world and was on the billboard top 100 in the 1970s. And so Lori, we'll start with you. Lori Odessa is our music teacher and um, we want you to tell us how you've used this song through the years to help students learn about Mill Valley history. Thank you, Dr. Berman. And thank you, Rita, so much for being um, it initiating this wonderful celebration and students again for taking time out of your summer to to be part of this special celebration. So I've been teaching in the district for over 25 years. And in third grade, um, I, we as music teachers try to connect with our classroom teachers with their curriculum. And one of the things in third grade that the students study is Mill Valley history. And so what a great way to introduce to them Mill Valley history through the song that you wrote, Rita. And so I talked to them about how you wrote this song and that you recorded it with your students and it was played on the radio. And immediately you can see that students start to take pride that there's a song about the city in which they live. And so right away, there's connection for the students. And we learned the song throughout the year. And then at the end of our third, year, uh, third grade um, school year, we do a performance for the parents and we, um, celebrate um, the learning of playing the recorder, of playing xylophones, and our songs. And then we, I like to conclude the whole program with the Mill Valley song. And again, you see that pride in the students when they're singing the song. And then I invite the, the parents to join along and sing with us because they remember listening to it. And um, again, it's a wonderful way of bringing community to our students. So thank you for this wonderful song that we can learn throughout the years. You're, well, you're very welcome. And thank you for, for honoring the song. We really appreciate it. When I looked up the video for the Mill Valley song on YouTube, I saw that you had some well-known collaborators who helped to make the video. I also saw that there were several other equally fantastic songs by Miss Rita in the Strawberry Point third grade class. Can you talk a bit about the experience of writing and recording these songs and videos with your students? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the Mill Valley song was written on Christmas Day of 1969. And I was, you know, I'm originally from Ohio and I had lived in different places. And when I came out to Mill Valley and started teaching here, I was really enthralled with the beauty of the town. And, and that day, Christmas Day, I was walking through what now is the plaza in Mill Valley, but then was the, you know, just the space around the Mill Valley bus depot, the Greyhound bus depot. And um, it just occurred to me that this town should have a song about it. And so I thought, I'll, I was teaching kindergarten at the time. And so I thought, I will, I'll write the song simply enough that the kindergartners could come in on the chorus. And that's, that's, that was the structure of the song. And I sat down on the bench, which is still there. And, um, and I just, I scribbled on some paper I had and I started writing this song and I almost finished the song. And then I got home that night and I, finished it. And, um, and then I taught it to my, my kids. And um, they, you know, they were adorable. And it was very easy for them to come in on the Mill Valley. And I sang the chorus. And, um, and then I met a record producer who I knew of because he was, he had recorded some really famous songs like Do You Believe in Magic? And he was in the process of recording Spirit in the Sky, which became the biggest selling record of 1970. Eric Jacobson was his name. And um, I told him I had written this song, this little song, and he said, send me a tape. So 
uh, I, my, my teacher's aide was Tommy Heath, who later became Tommy Two-Tone and had a big hit record of his own, 8675309 Jenny. And um, he was my teacher's aide. So with our little, you know, one of those clumsy webcore tape recorders, we recorded it in the class with the kids kind of yelling the words. And I made this tape and, and then I played it for Eric. And, you know, I thought, oh, this sounds terrible. What am I doing? This is ridiculous. But he said, I like it, let's, let's record it. So he had a contract with Warner Brothers. He took it to Warner Brothers, which is Warner Reprise. And um, it's a long story, but they, they stood up and they, and they gave it a standing ovation when he played it for them. And it was out, they put a rush release on it and it was out in 10 days all around the world. And it was right before school ended. So we had a chance to celebrate it at school. The disc, disc jockey, um, Terry McGovern, called the school first time they played it. And uh, it, we were in the teacher's lunchroom and all the kids came crowding into the teacher's lunchroom and they played the song. And from then on, it was just this amazing whirlwind where we heard from every place, every, you know, every city, every, we were in newspapers all over the world. So it was quite remarkable. Wow, and that and, happened quite quickly. Oh, I, I left out. I left out the important part, which was that the kindergartners recorded it. They brought the instruments into the classroom, and and they worked so hard. But when Eric listened to it, he said, "It just doesn't sound there." You know, with kindergartners, kind of the louder they sing, the better they think they sound. <laughs> he said, "It doesn't quite make it." So he said, "Can we borrow a third grade class in the school?" So we borrowed Mr. Pearson's third grade class, of which Scott was a member, and we took them into the studio and we did a proper studio recording, and that was the recording. So the poor kindergartners got left out; they didn't get to sing on the actual record. But it was a third. That's why it was a third grade class. They were not. My, I was a kindergarten teacher. Good to know. Little known fact. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Darren Smith is one of our other music teachers. And Darren, will you jump in? Absolutely. So Rita, so nice to see you again. We've met briefly at Strawberry Point where you came to visit and we were sort of featuring the Strawberry Point song at that point. And you've written quite a number of songs, actually. Um, I know that right. uh, you recorded, I think, more than just the Mill Valley song with that group of kids back in yes. 1970. And then I, I think you'll have a chance later to talk about some of your more current work. But um, my question to you is, um, it seems like music was always really an integral part of your class. That's the impression I get is that you're probably one of those teachers that's always singing with the kids. And I'm wondering, do you, music is maybe has been a, a big part of your life for a long time. Just wonder if you could talk about your musical background a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, all my life I've been very involved with music. And, and as, a, as a little girl, you know, I started writing songs very young. And my mother used to take me to Broadway shows. And when we, we grew up in Cleveland, and Cleveland has a wonderful music scene. And um, this Cleveland children, uh, school children in Cleveland were taken to the concerts by the Cleveland Orchestra and the Robert Shaw Chorale. So um, I, I was, and then I was trained, I, I studied piano. But by the time I started teaching kindergarten, I had given up on a musical career and I was very happy be being a kindergarten teacher. And that's when, when I became, you know, professionally really involved with music. We had this bizarre, you know, uh, little hit record that went all, all around the world. And if I had chosen a musical career, that probably never would have happened. But it was wonderfully integrated with my work with kids. And, um, and that was the fun part. And as you know, Darren, kids are, you know, all music. They're made of music. So it was perfect. We had a wonderful time together. And then when we made, we got, to, because the song was a hit, we got to make an album for, for Warner Reprise. And by that time, the kids were fourth graders. So the album was the fourth grade class. And I had some songs that I had written and some songs that I written that were really inspired by, um, by working with the kids and being with the kids, trying to you know write songs from their point of view. And the videos, someone asked about the videos, but we had so much fun making those videos. Scott, I don't know if you remember, but you've seen the videos. So uh, he'll tell you a little bit about that, but um, it was wild. Strawberry Point was a much freer place then as all schools were, but the, the Mill Valley District is still all about 
you know, honoring kids and what's natural for children. And that has not changed it, from what I can tell. And so we, the school supported it and the district supported it. And we, we all had so much fun. Um, the videos were shot by, by that time we were famous. They were shot by radio and TV stations. And, um, but you can see that it's, they're all, I hope everybody will look at some of those videos. I wonder why and floating away. Um, kids are just, you know, being kids in a way that is usually not possible today. <laughs> they were doing some wild things like sliding down hills and hanging over the water. <laughs> and you will see, and, you'll have to notice that the, the little wiry little blonde kid who was, as I said, the ringleader of all of it, the most mischievous one, that was this man, Scott Victor, who was sitting in his chair looking very professorial. <laughs> he was a wild kid. <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. Well, Scott, I'd love to hear from you. Um, any personal reflections on this experience from 50 years ago or any moments in particular that stand out in your memory or any songs that were your particular favorites? Uh, well, I had to, you know, go back and I actually listened to some of the songs on the album last night. And, uh, you know, while they're all fun and, you know, it was a great time, you know, I have to go back, you know, Mill Valley has still got to be the number one song and Floating Away, which I think was on the flip side of the 45. So those two songs were kind of the first two songs and, and, uh, so they brought back a lot of great memories. And like Rita said, we, we became famous really quick. And back in those days, you know, being on TV was a big deal. There was no cell phones. There was seven channels. There was no cable that came in on rabbit ears. And so it was a big deal to be on TV or the news. And so that was a lot of fun. And I'd have to say for me, one of the, the highlights was we got to sing the national anthem and uh, at a 49er game uh, at Keysar Stadium before Candlestick was built. And so just being on the field um, with all the 49ers, and um, um, it, it was just great. But we, we sang at the State Fair, got to go on a fire truck around the city singing Christmas carols, um, and, you know, just all kinds of crazy things that uh, uh, a lot of the nor a lot of the other third and fourth graders in the district just didn't get to do. So we definitely felt special. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, it was a really uh, crazy free kind of um, hippie type uh, atmosphere. And it was fun, you know. <laughs> Those are good memories, Scott. Of course, many of them, which I don't remember, but I'm glad you do. That's great. Um, I have a question and I have a comment. My comment is, why don't they haven't changed the swing the swings in seven in fifty years, which is very confusing. And my uh, and my question is, um, Scott, were you the boy with the blonde hair and the red bandana around your neck? No, that was Jerry Norton. That's a good friend of mine that uh, I still talk to, um, or see you know two three times a year. But uh, uh, did he have the red fire hat on too? Because I think that was Jerry. Right, in the song, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the video, yeah. And the first part of the question was about changing the name from third graders to fourth graders. Is that what I heard? No, I, the first part of the question was, were you the one with the blonde hair and the red bandana? I think her first What's question that? had to do with, she was recognizing that the slides are the same yeah. slides that they still slide on. And the swing. And the swings too, right? Oh. Wow. Interested in possibly why we haven't replaced our playground equipment. <laughs> 50 years. That's, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah. Built to last. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, we are going to now hear from some of our kids as well. Um, so Grace. Um, you have a question. You're a sixth grader at NVMS at our middle school. Grace, will you ask your question? Um, well, my question was, um, Miss Rita Abrams, do you still live in Mill Valley? I don't, Mill. I don't live in Mill Valley. Of course, I loved Mill Valley and lived there for many, many years. And then at a certain point, I couldn't quite afford to live there anymore. So 
I now move, I, I now live in uh, up north a little bit in Novato, but I, I kind of still feel like I live in Mill Valley because I, I've maintained my post office box there. So I could still own a little bit of real estate in Mill Valley, <laughs> five inches by 10 inches. And I go there all the time. And I have my dearest, dearest friends are still in Mill Valley. So Scott is laughing. He knows what that's like. <laughs> no, I just see Jerry Norton, the guy with the uh, red bandana joined us. So. We were just oh. talking about you, Jerry. One of our students wanted to know who that person um, back in the song with the red bandana was. So welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. That's funny. The red bandana. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Jerry Norton. I uh, read late. <clears throat> oh, late oh, Jerry. Oh, my God, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just get him, bring him in, Scott? I only just showed up. That's, that's Jerry. <laughs> that's fantastic. I had no idea. That's Jerry. That's a riot. I had to Welcome. email and uh, get invited in. Good. Welcome, Good. Jerry. We're so glad to have you. Do you have a song um, or a memory of recording the song that you want to share with all of the students and all of us here? Are you asking Jerry? Yes. Well, I, I do remember uh, going into the recording studio and that was quite an experience. And they, I guess it was a little outdated compared to nowadays, but I remember they had this big tape that was supposedly very expensive that they right. were using. Right. Okay. And do you remember um, Scott from back then as well? He mentioned you a little bit earlier, so it sounds like you two were friends in that class. I remember Scott from first grade, and we still, we still do stuff together. And uh, that was third grade, I think, when we uh, made that song, right? Yeah. yeah. Third grade and then, and then fourth grade for the whole album. Yeah, by that time... You guys were big fourth graders. Rita was able to tell us what type of student Scott was. What memories do you have of Jerry from your classroom or from your school? You know, all you have to do is look at that video of the Mill Valley song and, and you can see those little faces. And Jerry was, you know, just brimming with life and also mischief. The two of them, but you know, mischief then was kind of more wholesome than mischief is now. <laughs> so they were just very sweet, very fun kids. And it was like, I got to know them in the course of doing, you know, we have, there were quite a few others who really wanted to be on the call, but they were working and they couldn't make it work. So they'll be watching when, when they're able to see the video. Great. Um, yeah. so we also have a great, um, or Catherine now. Catherine is a fourth grade um, student from Park School. Catherine, you have a question for Rita. Would you please ask? Um, so, um, why did he want to write the song? Well, I, you know, as, as I said earlier, I was um, in love with the town of Mill Valley. From, I had no, when I came out here, I didn't know where I was going to be living. Um, it was kind of a wild adventure, and um, I, I just I I took a map and I picked out the names of towns and I called all the school districts. And it was late in the year because my plans had changed, so it was you know I didn't know if I was going to be able to get a job at all. And um, I got offered a job in Fremont, and I almost took it. And then I saw I had a Friday afternoon, I had an appointment, you know, and I, I just um, I figured I better take that appointment. And, and it was this, this school, the, the su superintendent, Jim Collins, he interviewed me extensively. And then he said, what about music? And I said, well, I am music. And so um, I wrote the song for the kindergartners to sing. I just wrote the song because I love the town and I thought the town should have a song. And then I wanted my kindergartners to be able to sing it easily. And then, um, as I said, the, the kindergartners couldn't quite cut it on a professional level. And that's when we brought in the big third grade professional singers, Mr. Pearson's class to cut the actual record. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Sydney is in a uh, fourth grader from Old Mill, Old Mill School. So Sydney, do you have a question for Miss Abrams? Um, yes. Uh, did you become famous um, after the song was a hit? Yes. Yes, like immediately we all became famous. And um, I knew how famous I was when a plumber came to fix my toilet. And uh, he was so shy around me. He acted like I was, um, you know, Marilyn Monroe or Elizabeth Taylor or somebody. <laughs> he thinks I'm famous, so I must be famous. And then I heard, I heard, I was at a doctor's appointment and I heard one of the workmen outside whistling the song. <laughs> he knows my song. I mean, so it was it was a pretty heady experience, but it didn't last that long. You know, um, the song fortunately lasted, but my fame lasted just as long as it needed to, and no longer. And and the um, and the children. I mean, they can speak for themselves. Scott could probably answer that. Jerry could answer that. What it was like. They were pretty oblivious to the fame part of it. I think they just you know they liked the fun part of it and the little perks that they got, but they could probably answer better. But for me, it was, it was fun. And I had some, I went on the Smothers Brothers show. They wanted to, the kids to come on the show, but they, the union wouldn't let them. So we brought the film of the kids on. And, um, and I was the real Rita Abrams. There was a show called, uh, um, ah, I forgot the name of the show, uh, where they say, will the real, re will the real person please stand up? And, uh, and so, I was that person. They flew me to New York. L lots of exciting things happened. But um, Jello wanted to make a commercial with me and the kids. And I said no, because I didn't want to, you know, pervert the experience. I, I, they were real kids and, uh, and I was a real teacher. And so I said no, thereby depriving all of us of thousands and thousands of dollars, <laughs> which in retrospect, I don't know if it was the best decision, but at the time I was kind of a hippie and I didn't oh, believe yeah. in commercialization. So, yeah. So we remained. Just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wasn't, wasn't getting good financial advice, but yeah. Scott or Jerry, do you, have any, yeah. do you have any moments as well as when you knew um, you were famous? Uh, you know, like I said, when we were on the Smothers Brothers show, um, uh, to me, it was more of the local stuff when we were on the local, you know, KGO and local TV, because back then, that's all you've got. And everybody watched, um, you know, local news and local TV. So I just remember um, being on some of this stuff. Life Magazine, that was the other big one. You know, you know everybody had Life Magazine on their coffee table. So... When we were in Life Magazine, that was a big, big deal. So, um, but like Rita said, it was just it, for Jerry and I and the rest of us. It was just fun. Like, I mean, it was just uh, extracurricular activity, you know, that other kids didn't get to do. So it was a lot of fun. Right, and you know, I I would like to say that um, the Mill Valley Library is doing. They're creating a virtual exhibit of of us and of all of the archives and everything. So the, these things that we're alluding to, like Life Magazine and Rolling Stone and all of them, you'll be able to see all of those articles and you know, artifacts from those times when that, when that exhibit comes out with the Mill Valley Library. Great, okay. Jerry, do you have any memories of being famous? Anything that struck you during that time? Well, my mother, sure. Dolores, Dolores Robinson's getting on right now. I told her to email. Oh, okay. good. And uh, <laughs> like Scott said, that the Life magazine and uh, was that was pretty big, but also just having fun, like going to that uh, that that state fair in Stockton. We did some uh, fun stuff. I think we were on the Sergeant Sacto show, something like that. <laughs> I remember that. It was yeah, that was fun. Wow, it sounds like you all had the um, pretty good media circuit there. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Well, it was, you know, there weren't, it was, it was a novelty. I mean, there weren't any real teachers and real classes, you know, who had national hit record, international hit records. So there was a lot of interest.
Great. Um, and I do see Dolores Robinson joined us. Dolores, um, you're, I think, the mother of Jerry, he said. And um, do you have any memories of when your um, child was in this class and was able to record the song? Well, my memory is that uh, the parents followed the singers wherever they went, from uh, fairs to uh, TV to um, Mill Valley celebrations. You know, we had to, we had to be in on the act and watch it every time we could. I bet it was exciting to have famous children. <laughs> yeah, right. It was a lot of fun. Hi, Dolores. It's really nice to see you. Hi. And, um, Hi. That, that is a good point. The parents were fabulous. They were just fabulous. They, they were so supportive and um, so helpful. It was really a wonderful part of the experience. That's great. India is a fourth grader from Edna McGuire School. India, would you please ask your question? Um, I can't really think of a question. Okay. We, well, you, in, India already asked a really good question, yeah, which we, really which we about the fireman and the scarf. Okay. <laughs> so you did you answered your question. You asked your question. You did. Um, so we'll go to Nate. Nate is fourth grade at Park. Nate, will you please ask your question? What was the hardest part of writing the song? That's a really good question. Um, the hardest part of writing it. You know, I, I actually have a scribbled pad still. That I still have the pad when I was writing and I was crossing out all these words. And I think um, the line about friendly, I didn't want to make the song too schmaltzy, you know, too corny. And it was hard not to do that because I was singing about a beautiful place. And um, so, and they could not, I didn't want to say, and everybody's so friendly because that sounded very trite. So I worked a lot on that phrase until I came up with, and you could be as friendly as you want to be. And so if you didn't feel like being friendly, you didn't have to be friendly. So I felt that set it apart from other towns where, you know, everybody was just friendly. Even though Mill Valley is a very friendly place and still is. But that's a good question. Thank you. Layla, will you please ask your question? Layla is fourth grade at Old Mill. What's your favorite part about Mill Valley? And that also is another good question. I'd love to hear what you all had to say about that. My favorite part, well, the beauty of the town and the fact that the town council through the years have always managed to keep it that way. It takes work to keep a town as beautiful as Mill Valley is. It, takes, it doesn't just happen by itself. What happens by itself is development and you know, um, things that aren't so beautiful and lots of uh, exploitation normally. Um, but Mill Valley is pure. It's very, very beautifully uh, handled and managed. And the first thing that I saw when I when I drove into the town was, was the mountain in the background. And I was just stunned by that. And so Mill Valley has been very lucky, but it, it's people, there are lots of people to thank for that. Everybody who's been, you know, serving in the, in the town um, manage, manages to keep it that way, helps to keep it that way. And then, um, and then the other favorite part is the people who I've been close to all the years through the years, and they're now old like me but we were all young once and we all had incredible times in Mill Valley. Um, there's, there was just a freedom and a, a wholesomeness about it that, that was why a lot of people came there from many, many other places. It's still a wonderful place. Wonderful. And I, I will also, I also just really quickly, I also like the, um, the liberal attitudes and the social uh, a activism, um, the ideals of most of the, you know, the town is, um, has always been that way. They've passed ordinances for, you know, against like nuclear power proliferation and so forth. We were, that's what we were marching for when I was young. And now, you know, the Black Lives Matter protests, 
they're big and they're vocal and they're, I'm very much in favor of that. Very proud of that tradition. Thank you. Um, Rhea is a fourth grader at Edna McGuire School. Rhea, will you ask your question, please? Uh -huh. um, do you still write and perform music? I, I do. Well, I write, uh, I've written a lot of musicals. I write musical comedies for the stage. Um, I wrote a musical, A Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, and I wrote a musical, Pride and Prejudice, which has had several performances and we'll have another one next year at Ross Valley Players. And so that's been my focus in recent years was to write musicals for the stage. And um, uh, the recording, you know, Mill Valley still remains probably the thing that I'll always be known for. Um, that little, simple, little song, despite all the other work I've done, that's the thing that will live longer than I will, <laughs> which is fine with me. I'm proud of it always. That's great. Thank you again for joining and sharing this special occasion with us. For those of you watching at home, we will be sharing this video um, with others and we invite you to share with us and on social media using the hashtag MV, that's my home. You can also take a look at our website for more information about this song and our celebration of its 50th anniversary. And now I think Amanda is going to share with us a video um, that we have created. Is that right, Amanda? Thank you so much. You did a great job with this program. Fabulous. Okay. We're so grateful for your time, Rita and Scott and Jerry. And so nice to see you, Dolores. Thank you. Our students, like, thank you so much. In the middle of summer, you get your call from your teacher, Darren and uh, Lori. <laughs> thank you so from everyone. And I everybody mean, stay safe, safe and well.
like about Mill Valley is all the friends I've made here, and I also like the different outdoor activities you can do, like playing soccer, or baseball, and hiking. I think Mill Valley is special because the weather is super duper nice, and all the people are so kind, unlike other cities that I know. It is very um, cool town, and I also like all of the stuff there. The see in the town and around like Stinson Beach, um, Mount Tam, Muir Beach, Muir Woods, and other stuff like that. Also, what I like is um, the history, like a gravity car and a Mount Tam Railway. Absolutely lovely, and and I'm again very grateful that you put this all together, everybody, and especially you, Kimberly. So we're so Fantastic. grateful that you were willing to do this and really celebrate our town and continue um, to think about Mill Valley in such a special way. I know it's special to all of these students who are on here. And so thank you. And thank you, Jerry and Scott. It was really extra, hey, uh, extra special too to have ask, you. Uh, can I ask Rita a question? Yeah, sure. I always remember <laughs> Jerry, that you made some maybe commercial jingles. Did you do the oh. Libby's Libby's Libby's? No, no, but I did the, um, we, after I stopped teaching, I did um, Del Monte. Nothing's too good for daddy and me. Mom brings Del Monte home. I remember Which was, that. of course, very sexist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jerry, there were, there were a couple, but no, I didn't do Libby's, Libby's. No. <laughs> I wish I had. Any Great to stuff? see you, Jerry. <laughs> Are there any other jingles that we would know, Rita, that you did? That Del Monte one was a famous one, um, and that happened several years after I stopped teaching, so I felt like it was okay, you know, to go commercial. Um, and then there was, a, there was a Camaro one that Tommy Heath um, and I did, um, but probably nothing else you would have remembered. Great. Yeah. Well, it was so fun to spend the morning with you. Thank you so much for your time. I have to also share, I'm from Ohio as well. So that was an interesting connection. Oh, really? Where, where in Ohio? Um, near Toledo, Finley. So which part of Cleveland were you from? Yeah, my mother, my mother was from Toledo, yeah. um, Cleveland Heights. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. And you look very young to be a school superintendent. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh. Wow. It was so good to see all of you. Thanks. We'll make sure you all get copies of this video as well. And we can't wait to showcase it for the rest of our community. I can't wait to see it, I can't wait to see it all together. Thank you, everybody, so much. It was delightful.